We are talking about something impossible. Do you know what an oxymoron is? Who knows what, it's, what an oxymoron is? One? Oxymoron two? Oxymoron three? Who offer more? An oxymoron is an impossibility, like, um, let me see, uh, military intelligence, uh, smart missiles, happy married, all, all, all those things, all those things that are kind of uh, impossibilities. Uh, so when we talk about smart security, can be <laughs> smart security. Yeah, good point, yes. Or, uh, or network security, because the two terms are absolutely in opposition. So, yes, we're talking about the issues about security in, in the state of the net. And I did some, uh, uh, something I really wanted to do since a long time. I asked three very good friends to share their thoughts with, with me and with you. And and ask them to talk freely about what they believe so they, their, their mandate is not to tell smart things or things that you usually say because this is what people wants to, want to listen. So I asked uh, Alessio Penasilico, come over, a big round of applause. He is a great, great expert in security. He is with me in the board of director of CLUSI, the Italian Association of Security. And, uh, and I asked Corrado Giustozzi. Corrado, uh, uh, all those guys have also names. <laughs> Nightgown Gusto Giustozzi, Mayhem. So, because they're the good guys, but sometimes they move in an arena in which it's better uh, being known by the name. Uh, Corrado is the Italian representative in the um, European Agency for Security for the uh, second mandate, second term. And Luisa Franchina. Luisa Franchina is uh, the proof that women can make the difference like we knew yesterday from uh, uh, Anna Masera. And she has been the one who ran many of the problems uh, of this poor country. Uh, but uh, she ran the uh, critical infrastructure team and she worked with the emergency team. So she knows a lot about the things that do not work and how to make them work. So take a seat. Uh. Uh, let's start from what happened yesterday. Yesterday it happened that a major telco operator uh, had a problem and uh, we don't know a lot about it. Is there anyone here who knows about the fresh news? No. Well, what we know is that no attack whatsoever, uh, no uh, hackers, but uh, probably Mr. Murphy attack. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alessio, what do you know? Because he is the one who knows more. Offi official uh, channels uh, says that uh, some hardware broke and uh, was supposed to be redundant, to have something uh, in failover, to uh, take uh, the, the control of the emergency and start uh, making things working again. This hardware failing failed in the wrong way because there is because also there is a, good a wrong way to, way fail, to and fail and a bad way to fail. <laughs> and uh, so the backup system was not able to take over the ownership of uh, the, the, the problem. So everything get uh, a domino effect caused everything stop work, working. Yeah, I think this is the point number one that we want to make. I think is. Uh, Yes, there are hackers, there is a problem, but first of all is the continuity of the operation. I imagine, Luisa, you, you did something in the past about that, even from the critical infrastructure standpoint. What's your feeling about Where are we? We are in front of a problem of critical infrastructure protection. So, here, I think. Uh, low batteries. Low. No, maybe it was okay. rumor. In dialogue. 
So uh, critical infrastructures means the, the, the layer, okay, and, and infrastructures and the systems and networks that give us the possibility to have quality of service as a continuity. And we saw yesterday that we can have problem about that and that not always what we thought could be the disaster recovery uh, can run in a correct way. So again, uh, the, the problem of critical infrastructures uh, blows up and we see that as a matter of fact, uh, we can have problems really and escalation and domino effects make the problem greater and greater and greater. Because uh, I think the major point is people demand to us as security experts, like uh, uh, they ask us eternal life, uh, it's going to be fine, you know. Uh, reality is that security do not exist. So we have to just to be prepared to the fact that something happened. Isn't that the, the, the European vision after all, Corrado, isn't that? Yeah, of course, perfect security doesn't exist uh, in the cyber world as it doesn't exist in real world. I mean, we cannot be uh, always perfectly secure or safe. We have to cope with the idea that things are going to break down, that uh, uh, bad things are going to happen, and we have to be uh, prepared to do that. So we have to know in advance what to do in case of uh, major breakdown or whatever, as we do for floods and for uh, earthquakes and things like that. The, the, exactly the same thing, things happen in, in the cyber world. So security is not only uh, to repel hackers' attacks, uh, but to be prepared for any kind of bad things that may disrupt your business or your activity. Or your life, because of course. I was talking with, with Alessia yesterday and I wanted to share the fact that <laughs> uh, you, what happens w when you have a network shortage <laughs> at your home and your wife. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, uh, let me define me uh, as a geek. Uh, so if there is a gadget that can, con can connect to the internet, I must have it. Uh, so one of the recurring questions of my wife at home is, are you sure I have to take my smartphone with me to go from kitchen to the bathroom to light <laughs> on <laughs> the lights? And uh, my answer is yes. And she gets quite angry. So uh, in my home, uh, power shortage or internet shortage means half of things uh, won't work, but also from an uh, information sharing point of view there are some problems. For example, our uh, uh, balance, balance, uh, our scale. balance scale, scale uh, is connected to internet and take uh, note of uh, every time you use it. And uh, I Ver remember very well once that uh, my wife was uh, shouting from the bathroom, stop it, he's posting on Facebook my, wa <laughs> my weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is part of a smart life and, and personal uh, self and, uh, and quantifying, you know. But one thing that is, uh, that we were talking this morning at breakfast is that uh, we have to decide what to share and what not, Luisa. You said, this is one of the big problems <laughs> that, that you're facing. Yeah, yeah. The first, first thing is to understand that what I'm going to put on the net is public. And I can think about that as public, even if I try to close the community, whatever. But in any case, it's lost. So whatever is really important for me as uh, availability, should have also a, a, a physical layer to, as, to be redundant. And what is important for me to be secret, or at least reserved, okay, should be never on the net. So I think everybody here know the, the terms in Italian, pizzino, which is the small piece of, wo of paper when we, where we write something, when we want to put a message or to give a message to somebody and then destroy it. So uh, go back sometimes to the paper and to the physical layer because it's at least sec more secure 
and sometimes maybe even safer. Okay. But you said that uh, this is a main difference when we talk about nation level. You know, there is some nation that think I can control the planet. I have all the emails of the planet. I have all the messages of the planet. Is it? Uh, does it have any sense this kind of approach in your? I have some problems. In fact, the email you sent me yesterday, so I don't imagine about searching among all the planet email. No, I mean, look from the other side, it's an advantage. Whenever my hard disk breaks down, uh, I have always a backup in Fort Meade or somewhere in the States. I can ask them for my emails. So, so it's, you just uh, it's, it's very please, useful, yes. Can you retrieve of the recipe of polenta that I had? Okay. Exactly. Yeah. They have it. <laughs> they have it. They have it. Okay, mm, uh, jokes apart. Of course, uh, there's someone that thinks that since uh, these kind of things are technically possibly possible now, they are doing that just because it, it is possible. Um, I'm not so sure that it is also useful. I mean, we have had demonstrations that gathering so much data doesn't really give you more clues on what's going on. Uh, we, we need better analysis, not more data, but it's a different kind of things. Lisa? Uh, and then there is a difference between quantity and power. Uh, like the difference between data and intelligence. So if you understand something, it's useful for you. If you just have data wherever and you storage them, but you store them, but uh, you, you don't use them, you don't understand, you don't even read, okay, it's unuseful. But maybe useful for other people, and we saw that. <laughs> you really, okay. Well, one thing that uh, uh, you have to know that uh, uh, as an association for security, we published since now three years. Is that uh, third or fourth? Three years, uh, four editions. Three years, uh, fourth edition. Uh, of, uh, of this book, this is a free and it's available. Uh, it's the report for security in Italy. And interesting enough, we had 50,000 downloads. 50,000 downloads, which is amazing in a country where we said, oh, you know, security is not important, blah, blah. But the major thing is that 90% of the problem c come from known attacks. <laughs> Unless you comment on this. It's a, it's a huge problem. Uh, first things, that report is free, is uh, available on uh, Clusit sites, and uh, there is also the English version uh, for uh, who wants it. It's so English people, if you want to know about Italy in English, we have a report. Uh, Clusit wrote this because uh, every uh, security company, very big, every year publish a report like this, talking about the problem worldwide. But the scope of this, of this book is to focus on what is happening in Italy, in the company uh, near me. And uh, the scenario is uh, <laughs> quite scary. Uh, it's not important who you are what you do, what you use, you'll, you will be attacked if you don't protect yourself. Something bad will happen. Uh, so the classical answer, uh, you know, for what I do, no one will ever attack me. It's no more working. It's not, it, it was not working in the 90s. Let's imagine now. No, because we, we saw uh, just uh, yesterday morning, uh, statistics about people saying, should I protect and blah, blah. They say, well, the things I have on my phone are not relevant. You know, they think it's not relevant. Our devices contain so much sensitive information about ourselves, uh, are more private than... Uh, uh, than anything else, uh, I don't imagine something more private than my phone, my PC, and uh, my tablet. And uh, all those devices uh, are um, vulnerable, can be attacked, uh, exist, uh, let's say, malware, viruses, uh, and so on, for every platform. Uh, I, it's an iPad, it's Android, it's a Mac. There is uh, still, nowadays, people that think that Mac don't have viruses. 
every platform have viruses. And uh, if you don't protect yourself, it's a problem. Even because, uh, as you said uh, in your question, the techniques uh, uh, used to attack our infrastructure are so old and simple, are techniques that uh, are teached in the, to, to, to our teenagers at school. Uh, when you update your operating system, very often the problem you are going to fix is something that we know since the 80s because the first uh, um, scientific uh, uh, paper on, on that kind of attacks is uh, of uh, 86. Uh, so we are not able to defend ourselves from uh, last century attacks. Uh, and we are talking about new threats. Uh, start yeah. from the old one. You know, uh, there is a big hype on the data gate. You know, uh, in the security community, uh, we didn't have any, even a blink. I, I mean, spying, it's an old uh, job. You, you said that it's the second oldest job is to spy. Uh, this is why they invented uh, ciphering, cryptography, etc. So the fact that a nation spies another nation, I think it's normal. What is, what is new in this event? What is different? What do you think is really the thing that made the change from before? Well, that, that's actually true. I mean, cryptography was invented because each and every state had the uh, ability to spy on uh, um, diplomatic uh, mails. It was common in Europe in uh, 15th century. That's why uh, Venezia and the uh, Papal Court in Rome developed cryptography in the first place. Because each government opened the diplomatic correspondence of other governments, it, it was common. What has changed now is the scale of the, this phenomenon. Uh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't possible until a few years ago that a government spied on the citizens of another state they used to spy on diplomatic uh, mail it's like or like shooting soldiers or shooting civilian exactly I, I mean, mm, uh, we didn't have the 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 possibility to spy on each individual citizen on millions of citizens of another country that's in my opinion what has dramatically changed the perspective of the espionage it's not more targeted on I mean, sensitive uh, targets, um, diplomats, uh, military, but on the, uh, on, on the society uh, as a whole, which is caring. Risa, your point of view? Uh, speed, because there, was the, there has been an enhancement of speed, speedness, and uh, scale, complexity. So we have several levels more in, in terms of complexity of this uh, action. And, but on the other hand, everybody is more able now to put more disinformation, propaganda, poisoning information. So we can uh, give as a uh, as assurance that I I I I'm, I'm under espionage. Everybody, every state, every government, but everybody is more able to decide and pilot which kind of information wants to give to the others and wants to give. I think this is an interesting point because uh, the counter information has been always a response to espionage. Okay. Uh, if you think at the overlord uh, uh, action, uh, half of the work was deceiving the Nazis from what was happening. So you're suggesting, take for granted that you are a spy, rule number one. Take for granted that there are things that if you don't want them to know, don't put it in an electronic device, rule number two. And rule number three, why don't you just put just also a deceiving information. This is really female. This is really nasty, you know. Uh, but do you think that they, in the local, not local government, but in the, in the Italian government institution, this is the perception, or, or are you still fighting to have them understand this kind of? I know you had, we had long fights about, but 
without revealing secret, what is the situation? Better than we think. Better, better, better than we think. And as always, persons makes institutions. So it's a problem of, of, of people. Of people. people. So you say that now there are better people than yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, More knowledgeable. Uh, new generation are growing and. So it's we are easier. part of the new generation. Yeah, we are part of the uh, new okay, generation no, for that, sure. <laughs> that, that, that you know about it, you okay. Internet. Uh, Let's go uh, to another issue about is the concept of border, you know? The concept of border because when we heard the data gate is nation spying on a nation uh, uh, or Miss Merkel with, with a cracked phone, which for us, I mean, sounds like strange because the one thing is I would shoot her responsible for security, you cannot give your prime minister a crackable phone, come on. <laughs> eh? I, I don't know if you understand the, the subtle thing, you know, uh, but uh, do you think that people still think that there is borders in the internet, which is impossible? The Go, Alessio. Fa fast answer. Yes, uh, I was reading uh, yesterday or something like that uh, on Facebook about an Italian politician that was proposing uh, of uh, an Italian law about the internet. So, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> and, uh, go on. If I, my, the, the, uh, those, those sort of things happen from time to time. I mean, in the last 15 years, uh, we've seen, uh, as far as I remember, at least two or three uh, try to uh, to put some new laws about the internet. So the interesting thing is that uh, the, the European uh, Union uh, that last year published the, the, the European cyber strategy, I mean it, it is the formal strategy of the Europe to uh, have a safe and secure cyberspace, formally states that there is no need for new laws, for special laws for the internet, they explicitly, expi explicitly say that the same rules that apply in our real uh, life also apply on the internet. So no need for special laws or special rules, the same things apply. More, more than 10 years uh, ago, I was going to many conferences trying to explain uh, how to uh, configure in the right way some devices. For example, configure in the right way your mail server, uh, because if you don't do, don't do that, uh, your server will be used to send a spam. Uh, the goal was not call me to configure your server, was configure in the right way your server, because if everyone do that, I receive less spam. Because it's a whole ecosystem, everyone's action has an impact on everyone else. So I, think this is, I think this is the point where, uh, when we talk about security at a multi national level or a European level, etc., is that the, the answer is in cooperation, you know? People think that security is hide, uh, separate, cut, avoid. While we are saying and preaching, the answer is smart in this sense. Help each other, be safe, exchange, communicate, and uh, and I want to, uh, uh, to ask Corrado, because after all, the European agency is this. Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, security is cooperation, it, it is culture, it's the culture of the cooperation. Uh, cooperating is not easy. We have to be trained to do, we have to trust each other. So uh, we, we have to set uh, in place the possibilities uh, and, uh, and the rules and uh, infrastructure to facilitate the cooperation among people who usually do different things. Uh, it's wrong to think that security must be um, assured by some third place, I mean the police or uh, firemen or whatever. Security is uh, the state of the, of, of the facts when everyone 
does the right thing in accordance to the others. Risa, uh, you faced some tough things in the past. You know, some event, big event. You, you were involved in what? Uh, the fu it was the funeral of the Pope, the one you were involved? L'Aquila earthquake uh, yeah. and yeah, several which, other. No, yeah. Because one thing that people have to realize that security, when security works, you don't hear about because everything was fine. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can yeah. You, <laughs> what happened? Just a little bit about the big things that you had to face. Well, in, in big events like the funeral of Pope, Pope uh, John Paul oh, II uh, or, or the earthquake of L'Aquila, we faced the, a, a great effect of blocking a city, okay, like Rome in the funeral or like L'Aquila in, in the earthquake. And we saw that the, the, the first thing is that victims and people impacted by the, the crisis are actors like uh, uh, emergency services of the crisis and they manage the crisis as well as the others. So if you have cooperation and you reach uh, a good communication and information to the people that are involved, you are, uh, have a great success in managing whatever kind of, of crisis, even with deaths or with big problems. Uh, uh, so managing means always good information and give people a good motivation to be part and to participate. So you mean the citizens? Citizens, the yeah, were involved and civil protection in Italy experimented the, the, the way of text message to the people involved since the blackout of 2003. So we are a pilot, a pilot country in terms of information through this kind of uh, channel, uh, which is point to point means that the Department of Civil Protection is going to talk to every people, every person involved in the crisis. So everybody becomes to re and starts to realize that he's part of the crisis management and not only someone passive as a victim. I think this, this is the, the point that joins what's going on in so-called uh, social networks and security. So after all, we are spreading the same message. You are important. Your opinion is important when you visit a hotel. Your opinion is counts when you, uh, you make a claim to, uh, to your hospital or you are relevant in a, in a situation of emergency. You are part of the solution. You are not just part of the problem. You actually, you are part of the problem, Vero Alessio. <laughs> but uh, I think this is a major, major change uh, to, to the vision of security that we thought was, was part of technology. Uh, I think that everybody has to understand that technology is part of the security, but a less important part than it was before. Uh, I, when you say the text messages to individual means that you change completely the vision of, of the system. You have experiences uh, of attacks to small companies. Now, I don't want to, de you know, every time I said you have an example on attacks, he looks at me and says, I can't say that. <laughs> I know, Alessio, you, you can't. But let's say that we can find mm, clean ways to talk about things, okay? Let's talk about the uh, denial of service attacks, okay? This is something that, that happened to a single company or to a nation. Are, what happens there? Okay. Few, we are lucky because <laughs> uh, among all, I have uh, a customer that is uh, very clever that did something very different from uh, uh, each customer I uh, have ahead. Uh, it is a small company, uh, we are talking about uh, less than uh, 50 people uh, near Turin um, in a place out of the city with a lot of green around, a small company that run a business that is mainly based on their internet portal uh, and uh, they were subject uh, ta the target of a denial uh, of service attack, so every uh, second that their portal was not working, they were losing euros uh, and uh, 
they decided not only to uh, contrast the attack, uh, so to act in a technically way, uh, but uh, their, uh, uh, so this is the case that I usually uh, uh, use to tell also small companies receive attacks and have to face this problem, but their approach was different. Not only face the problem from a technical point of view, but also instead of hiding the problem, system maintenance or something like that, they uh, create uh, a marketing campaign based on the attack, saying we are the good part of internet. We are, uh, uh, they, they manage a free service. We are the free internet and who is attacking us? They are the bad guys, so please support us. And they start uh, uh, buying uh, marketing pages on uh, newspapers, uh, on other sites and so on. So during the attack, they were not losing customers. They were acquiring customers. It was an incredible experience. I was uh, split in my work for them between coordinating the team that was facing the technical emergency and giving interview to newspapers to describe what was uh, happening. Uh, there are so, so few companies that disclose the details about the attacks that think, Gigi, that uh, I went to New York to talk during a conference in New York to explain to the American people what happened to a small company in Turin. From Turin to New York, I think there are quite a lot of companies we, that receive the tax and can talk about that. But that case is so famous worldwide because they disclosed the de details about the tax. Because also, in their opinion, it was if we, small companies, are attacked, also other small companies are attacked, and s these details can help them. Uh, Corrado? Yes, just a couple of observations. One on that, uh, we in Europe have a, a law since a couple of years that says that each uh, service provider, each telco, has to report the security breaches. Uh, in order to build uh, uh, a system of uh, information interchange to be safe. Uh, there have been strong oppositions from the operators and also operators in, in other uh, type of industries. I mean, the, the European Commission wants to uh, widen the scope of, of this rule to, let's say, banks or whatever. And those um, organizations are very reluctant to disclose information about their breaches. They don't want to because they fear that they will lose some secrecy. They, they don't trust each other. They w will, would be more favorable to that if there were some third party secure agency that collect anonymously whatever information and release, the, but without disclosing the particular. So we have a, a long way to do on that and uh, okay a very important information is that uh, in the closet report uh, uh, for the first time here in italy you can find the statistics disclosed by fastweb that is one of the major uh, isp in italy that disclose all the statistics about the attacks that they saw from uh, their point of view targeting their users uh, and uh, our data, very important to know. Uh, Luisa, uh, how is the situation about sharing information? Uh, you have to know that Luisa and I were the first who tried in Italy to have people from the telco company. We gathered them in a room. After all, six people are the telco in Italy. And we ask each one, please exchange the telephone number and the telephone num and the mobile number of your uh, right arm. So in case of emergency, you know who to call. And this was a kind of miracle that we did. But how is the situation now in the public administration about building the so-called ISACs, uh, Information Sharing and Awareness Center? Are we still... We are still working about that uh, as a private and public sector, uh, but mm, we have a problem of mentality in Italy because still uh, sometimes information is uh, thought as a competitive advantage. So we 
prefer sometimes to play uh, as a single, okay, not as a team in defense, and we forget that the attacker has always a t are always a team. I mean, they have a team by default because they have also the dark internet and whatever, where they have a team, but for sure. We, wherever kind and whenever and whatever kind of team. So we prefer to play uh, in a singular way, but it's uh, so hard and we duplicate everything. And so we are trying to diffuse, to, to make understand people that uh, information sharing is very important. But if you look at the national strategy, still information sharing is not uh, explicit. So it's uh, behind the lines, but or no point, of, no one. Huh? Or it's part of a personal attitude. Yeah. So this is why people like you yeah. and like others can force people to cooperate, yeah. not by the law, but mm -mm. because you convince them to, to yeah, do yeah. it. There is, there is an advantage. So uh, we, we still have to measure the, the advantage and to make people understand that there is a real return of investment of the <laughs> information sharing. Well, one thing that people might like to know is that the Italians have won the World Championship of Hacking for three years and uh, you've been in one of those uh, events in Singapore? Uh, where yeah, yeah, I was not in the team, no, I was no, not but playing, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, but okay. I, was, yeah, I was there and uh, yes, it, uh, it's impressive. Uh, usually, uh, well, there are worldwide uh, a small group of people, let's say some uh, thousands, uh, that call themselves uh, the hacker community, the good one, uh, that participate to some conferences uh, all around the world. Uh, the final of this uh, championship is uh, in Las Vegas, uh, but I was in uh, the, the most impressive I saw was in uh, uh, Kuala Lumpur in uh, Malaysia, uh, where there is uh, one of these fightings, where there are different teams. Uh, every team has a server and has to protect uh, its server from other team attacks and uh, at the same time attack uh, the servers of other teams. Every time you uh, stop an attack, you earn a point. Every time you um, have a successful attack to another team, you have a point. Well, the final result then, there was uh, all teams under uh, 10,000 points. Italian team, something like 40,000 points. Vietnam team, something like 80,000 points. Because the main difference was that uh, every team was four people, uh, usually two working and two sleeping, eating, uh, going to the bathroom and so on. Except uh, the Vietnam team that was four people working 24 hours. Oh, uh, the context uh, is three days long uh, on the 24 hours. So those four people was working all together all the time for the whole three days. So if the question is, uh, are we able to defend ourselves from them? The answer is no. <laughs> but uh, w what about technology, uh, Corrado? Do you think that the technology we are using is up to date to the challenges? Well, <laughs> in this question, uh, talking about the internet, the problem is that the technology of the internet is very old. Internet was taught in the 60s, built in the, in the 70s, uh, uh, went public <clears throat> in, the, in the 80s, and the technology uh, is not really changed. And, and that's, I mean, the, 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 the amazing thing in, is that Internet still works and works very well, has scaled uh, many orders of magnitude, but there are some uh, very fundamental mechanisms w that are weak because they have been taught in a different word, a word made of people acting in good faith uh, for, 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 the good, for, for the good of the community. Uh, just a case, uh, four years ago in 2010, in August, China was able to hijack 25% of the 
worldwide internet traffic, a quarter of the internet traffic that has been routed through China for 20 minutes. It was uh, like a science fiction movie, but it was reality. The traffic was most from Europe, but also from the States, and there was the Pentagon when it uh, startled traffic. For, for 20 minutes, they hijacked, they steal all the traffic, 24, 25% of the traffic. How uh, uh, this was possible? Because the protocol, the, the law that stays the way or, uh, um, along which the, the traffic is interchanged between nations, is a very old protocol, it's called BGP, Border Gateway Protocol. It uh, went in, uh, um, in operation in 1994, and it's based on good faith. If a guy comes up and says to the community, hey guys, I am responsible for this set of internet address, it, they are under my jurisdiction, all the other nations say, okay, very well, I will give that traffic to you. And that's what actually China said. It was a mistake, they said, of course. <laughs> it was a misconfiguration on some oh, yes, devices. Yes. It happens. And they, they stole 50,000 international routes and their infrastructure didn't collapse, by the way. Those kind of things. Internet is, is still made on those uh, fundamental technologies, which is scaring. I, I, dis uh, I disagree with Corrado. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, some technological problems that let's hope will be solved. Uh, everything you said is true, but in my opinion, the main problem uh, we have about security today is about people, of not course, about not technology. I agree at all, but Reason? I mean, it, it, it just people. does, does things uh, worst. Who, who believed that the problem with, the, with security is technology or people. Who votes for technology? One. Who votes for people is the problem? Okay. <laughs> okay, now we got instant polling. This is our Twitter polling. One thing is, uh, in a meeting, in, in a high, uh, in one of the things that, that, that we, we did, uh, the problem of IBM selling everything to China, Cisco producing in China, uh, do we believe that the hardware we are using and that is manufactured somewhere in the world we don't know has something in it? Well, we don't have proofs, we cannot say things, but uh, <laughs> Riza, what can we say? Then, uh, like before, we we take it as granted that it has. <laughs> it's so the only way is to. The only way is to think that uh, for granted okay, that it the has. the CIA for sure yeah. and the Mossad for sure. Uh, 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 and, and then you decide which kind of uh, government you prefer and so which kind of technology. Uh, but at the moment there is a sort of. Uh, let's say, mentality uh, of the national made. So made in Italy also for technology, uh, cloud computing and so on. So somebody is speaking about that. And also in Europe, everybody is talking about uh, made in Europe, let's say, or made in my own nation. Uh, of course, there is a, 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 a great problem because you think about big names or multinational companies and define you know, that yes, that no, and so on, but you forget for, uh, for sure some small uh, supplier that in any case inside the supply chain uh, and can give you problems. So, uh, that, that, Anyway, talking about a, 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 a national point of view is already something. Like you said before, we were the pioneer about uh, sharing. Uh, sharing information. And now, again, somebody is pioneer a, a, a new, of a new age uh, of this kind mm -hmm. of approach for technology. The last question is about the privacy at a national level. So we were discussing about privacy as a personal issue, okay? And, uh, and someone says, keep on using passwords. 
Okay, because at least it's like, uh, I remember the SAP security manager who did this campaign throughout the company saying, uh, passwords are like underwear, you know, don't show it, change it frequently, the longer the better, uh, uh, don't, give don't give it to others, don't use others, okay, so remember, passwords are like your underwear, okay. It's not the solution, but it's a good solution. And the question is, there is uh, still nowadays someone that thinks that a password is enough to protect uh, some data? Is Because my opinion is no. Okay, it's like the underwear are not enough. <laughs> okay, there are other types of dresses that you should use. But uh, I think one of the, the things that the data gate showed that the aggregate value of a profiling is not just a personal point, it's also a nation profiling that becomes a value after all. I mean, the way we think, the way we act as a community is a value. So we should think about protecting in some way and defend the privacy, not just as individual, but as a community, as a country, as a continent. What do you think about it? Is that just an ideological standpoint or, or it has some sense? Who? Uh, as Corrado said before, uh, there was a, a huge change uh, in uh, the point of view on some aspects. Uh, we were talking about uh, uh, spying, but also privacy. It was something about the VIPs, uh, the very important people, and then last century uh, became something for every person. So nation privacy, in my opinion, exists. Uh, there are some uh, data that have to be secret, have to be uh, defended, uh, so it's not only an idea, it's uh, a need, in my opinion. Luisa, yeah, your for point? Sure. For sure, and also uh, at industrial level, scientific level, so there are uh, national interests that must be protected uh, in terms of knowledge and know-how. So not only secrets about military or uh, criminals and whatever, but also data about the, our own knowledge that must be granted. But if I understand well the question, the question was not about those kind of data, but the, of people behavior, people data, which uh, makes, uh, I, I mean, uh, a, a huge amount of value about a nation, was yes, it? I mean, so no industrial secrets or scientific oh, no. discoveries. The concept, how how the, Italian people the, act on the Facebook. Way, the way people, yeah. the, what they uh, say, what they chat, what they tweet, what they uh, feel, that, that was the question. I can make a lot of espionage uh, going through Abs social media, absolutely. understanding whatever absolutely. people do in their own work because they talk about what they do what they know, uh, what they use, so uh, let, a lot let, of... Let me say that Mr. President Obama won his second election just on that, observing the behavior of the, of the people in, by Twitter and reacting accordingly in real time, so it was very clever. I think it's the, the point that we are really discussing this morning is the value of the information. You know, the, the fact that if we understand that nobody but me can decide what is relevant, yeah. you know, because the, the principle of, of privacy is I am the owner of myself. You know, the, in the feminist day, there, there was this kind of meme. One of my favorite uh, citation from my film is from uh, Sneakers, uh, an old film with Robert Redford, where in a scene, uh, in a final scene, uh, there is a monologue uh, on uh, the roof uh, uh, where a guy say, there is a war outside and is not going to win we, uh, who has more ballot, but who has more information. Uh, we live in a world that is made of bit, of one and zero, and who knows uh, will win the war. And the film uh, was uh, wrote uh, in the 92. So, yeah. <laughs> no, the, the, the point is, we uh, often uh, talk 
uh, think about ourselves as uh, information consumers, uh, but we are also information producers. The fact is that it was not uh, technically possible until a few years ago for someone else to aggregate all those uh, uh, small, tiny pieces of information that each of us produces daily. Now it is possible and it changes the perspective on which we should consider our lives. Also, also because we talked about the old technique, but the new technique that are all based on attacking not your target, but someone relative to your target. The most famous uh, uh, scandal was uh, an attack directed to Lockheed Martin. You know, they construct a lot of strange things. But the attack was against RSA, that was a company that was giving to Lockheed Martin some technology. So uh, understanding who you are who is uh, your friend, uh, it's uh, the new way to attack you. Okay, uh, is there any specific question around? Because otherwise I think we can summarize the, not solve the oxymoron of, uh, of smart security, but we can say that there is something smart that we can do uh, when, when we deal about security. Uh, first of all, that there is no security. So no absolute security. No absolute There's security. a reasonable level of security. That okay, we a may reasonable reach. level of security, and that we don't have to act. What if something happens? But taking for granted that something will happen, what should I do to restart as fast as I can? What can I do to lose as less data as I can? Second point is the information is a value. So uh, we should tell the guys that answer to the, uh, to the poll on the first day, well, after all, there's nothing important in my phone. Yes, it's important. And if I think at L'Aquila earthquake, uh, we consider, well, we lost monuments, we lost frescoes. But what about all the pictures, all the memorabilia of a family? What about all the recording, all the things that were in the computer that has been destroyed by the quake as a whole value that has not been backed up? This is a value to defend as a value of a community. The third point is the smart way of looking at security is cooperation. There's nothing we can do alone. There are lots of good guys in the... <laughs> These are the good guys, take the names. And, uh, and the good guys should remain in circle and, and talk to each other. What you're doing, what's happening. If you have a problem, think who is the one you can talk and ask about. And... Uh, Final, final point is the, the one that Louisa made and is very important. It's like in, in the particle physics, the observer is part of the experiment. So citizens are part of the solution. Citizens are not just the target, are provider of information, can and have to understand that there's nothing we can do unless they are active part to uh, a better network, to a smarter network. Thank you, everybody.